when women speak and new jersey poetry events presents when people speak poetry and conversation with pop-up poetry guests Good evening, everybody out there in Facebook land. This is the third, the third edition of When People Speak. And I have tonight a fantastic lineup, which always begins with my co-host, Mr. James Ellerby. So without further ado, let me introduce my co-host, Mr. James Ellerby. Yes, yes. How's everybody doing in Facebook land? And Trust me, you're at the right place at the right time for uh, When People Speak. Three, featuring the very talented vocalist, poet, and actor, Treasure. And um, we have a whole host of guest pop-up poets here as well, poets and as uh, uh, musical talent as well uh, with us. And trust me, um, this is going to be a very, very impactful, very inspire, inspiring event. And um, should we just go right on in? Absolutely. So I'm going to open the program today with my poem, followed immediately behind me, is Mr. James Ellerby. So hold on to your seats, folks, because today we're going to talk about poetry and we're going to talk about what's happening in society and we're going to let everything flow. So here's my message to you this evening. The power of poetry is that no two poets are ever the same. And there are no rules of what makes a good poem. So poets try to rule the heart by guiding the mind, spitting endlessly verbiage of tongueless metaphors. So it is true. I too wish to find something important enough to pierce the rhythm, the rhythm and the beat of your spirit, your heart, so feel it. Drummer to drum keeper, singer to sing, singer to singer, dancer to dancer, actor to storyteller. Remember me somewhere when your hearts and rhythms race harder and rise above the murmurs, and when the heartbeat returns. The best is so familiar. The best is so familiar, and so is the beat. It reaches in and grabs my soul. Thump, thump. And as many years as I travel this road, remember me and that song, no matter how sung, the me, the you, them that follow the ride we shared in this life was like a drum beat, the up, the down, the current of our lives always flowing in a forward motion. Even, even if it's denial where up is down and down is up and there was always faith and hope. The heat since passed, but the warmth remains, the beat, the beat, the beat the drums of our souls. When my seat sits empty and what's left of me is but a memory of truth, pick up the beat. We rolled this life together in one spirit shared by two, the me, the you. And when my chair sits empty, pick up the beat for you. You are a drummer too. Do what drummers do, carry the beat. Thump, thump, thump. And remember me somewhere. No two poets are ever the same and the beat between them will always remain. And welcome to When People Speak. Right, right. Clap it up for the very talented, my co-host, my tag team partner, my dynamic duo, Amira. <laughs> so when we get no superhero shirts, James. Oh man, I, I gotta tell y'all about that later, about that later. Um, but definitely um, people been asking about the New Jersey uh, poetry events, uh, t-shirts. Um, they will become available very soon. And um, trust me, um, you're definitely supporting the New Jersey poetry community. Uh, that's what I created the website for. And you can always go to NewJerseyPoetryEvents.com for your latest uh, New Jersey poetry events. And for all y'all promoters out there, you can also promote your venue as well. And um, Amira, you got any uh, when women speak coming up? Uh, thank you for the introduction. Actually, when women speaks is a monthly event, just as when people speak is, September, and it will also be virtual. So that will be posted in poetry events, New Jersey poetry events excuse me, and also on my page. So there is no date as of now, but I'm looking for those female poets out there. If you want to join, you want to have your voice heard, hit me up, hit me up. 
right, right, right. See, I'm kind of jealous because I don't get a chance to go, but you know, <laughs> definitely respect respect the women holding it down for the poetry community. And um, I had my opportunity one time to uh, to definitely share the stage um, at when women speak and when men speak. Um, so um, I definitely know, you know, the next one is going to be uh, phenomenal and always uh, uh, a treasure. <laughs> just like the feature we have, <laughs> just like the feature we have for tonight. But um, I'm gonna go into my first piece. Um, this is off the. Uh, this is com coming from my poetry book, Beyond the Event Horizon. If you don't get got it, get it. You can get it. Um, just hit me up, inbox me, or just go to jamescellaby.com. Um, but um, it's talking about the children out there. And I call this a child um, that doesn't have its own. What if a child doesn't have its own, never had his own, was grown in a world where home is every street corner, every block, where shots are heard in distance like clockwork. Can't work because he or she's not old enough, but can work the streets because he or she only, only need to be bold enough or somewhat tough. What if a child goes to a school that doesn't care, where teachers are too scared to teach them the tools that they need to succeed in a society that believes that if you're Black, you're cursed, and if you're poor, your life is not worth one cent? What if a child has a mother who can barely pay the rent because she's cracked out, had a daddy that backed out of being a father? What if a child doesn't bother to think about who he or she is stealing from or if he or she killed someone in the process? What if a, girl, a young girl grows up thinking that love is nothing but sex and if she doesn't give it up, She'll be his ex. What if a child has nothing left to do, no paradise to look forward to, and the only thing left to do is to take his or her life, lay their soul to rest? Will the same child be blessed? And the Bible says, and still is good news. Papa may have, and mama may have, but God bless the child that's got his own. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Listen, Thank you. you told me earlier today mm -hmm. in no uncertain terms that you were not a singer i'm not <laughs> you know what? I, treasure y'all come out of that vip section y'all give him some some props for that song what do y'all think about that poem and his his um his musical talent there that he added to that piece you need to sing more sir what do you mean you're not a singer? i don't know what um what does that mean you're not a singer about? what you said uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I, I, I need some more uh, of practice or something, or or some more uh, lessons or something. You know, just to you know, I'm not as comfortable as I am in poetry. Poetry, okay. that's like you know, what I'm saying that's like my go-to. That's my passion. But singing, you know, I dibble and dabble in the shower. You know. Okay. <laughs> so you are a singer. You oh, just thank you. Aren't comfortable yet. Right, exactly. It's exactly. true. I dig it. True. I dig it. Bravo, James. Thank well, you, man. I Thank think it's you. the ones who can't sing, Shahi, who, who are comfortable, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, that was a powerful piece, and um, it resonates uh, through today and some of the things that are happening with mothers and um, sons and um, just Black people in, in, in general losing lives. Even today, um, the young man, uh, uh, Mr. Blake that was shot down or shot in the back and there were two actually today one actually lost his life and the other one is um 
probably going to be, well, I don't want to even put that out there, but he's, he's in, in severe trouble, trauma right now in the hospital. So it talks about the children. Like, you know, most of us on this, on this feed right now are either parents or we're educators or we're both. And so that kind of touched my soul deeply um, because no matter if I birthed the kid or not, sometimes I get very, very attached. And, and what's happening today, the news uh, kind of really made me sit down and it kind of took the wind from me. Um, so it's very timely and it's a, a good piece for the start of this show. Thank you, James. Thank you. Next on our mic, we have coming to the stage, um, a young man who like he's powerful beyond, beyond anyone's imagination. I don't even know if he knows how, how I'm gonna use this word, cool he really is. Um, he never ceased to amaze me. He's always coming up with new pieces. He, he, he manages to um, work his poetry into his job as a teacher and get those youth up out of their seats and involved and all excited about learning. I love this young guy. Um, and uh, James, do you have any, before I call out this gentleman's name, do you have anything that you'd like to say about the mystery of the next guest? Yeah, the one thing I like is, um, first of all, not only is he a poet, um, he's an MC, but there's history behind his legacy. Um, he's a former member of the Universal Zulu Nation. So all y'all, yeah, clap it up for that. I gotta Woo! give respect to that. Um, definitely pioneers in this hip hop genre. Um, but I love this quote. Uh, one of his quotes, um, he says, poetry is a part of me. My pen hits the pad with the power of an arrow during archery. It ain't hard to see, writing pours through my blood veins and arteries. Dang. And that's a true testament to, to the passion Whoa. and the love that not only this phenomenal artist has for poetry and hip-hop and i'm talking about the one the only he's not a mystery he's mr e mr e snap it up snap it up for my fellow educator and poet let's go let's go keep those snaps going for our amazing hosts and co-hosts uh amira shabazz and mr james ellerby that introduction just completely just breathed life into me so Thank you guys. I also admire the work that each of you guys do. Um, so thank you for that for that um, awesome introduction. I appreciate that. Um, so just a little introduction uh, for those of you who don't know me. I go by the name of Mr. E. I like to say in the classroom, it's Mr. E. To those who don't know me, I'm a mystery. Soon I shall reveal my story. Pay attention so you don't miss the story. That's just my little entendre introduction. Uh, today I'm going to be doing um, some new piece. I'm going to do some uh, a brand new piece. Um, you know, we uh, James had just spoken about um, his piece was uh, was it a child without a home, something of that nature. So I'm actually that I, you know before this show I was debating what I was going to do. I'm going to do one piece speaking about the youth and my my role in it. Um, you know, in years past as a substitute teacher. Uh, and then the next piece will will speak about the home. So without further ado, I'm going to get straight into it. Uh, this piece, uh, first time sharing it, I do have it um, written. Usually everything is memorized, but this will be off um, the phone. This piece is called The Substitute Teacher. Oh, shoot, we got a sub. Is the first words I hear from students in the hallway shouting near, surprised, they're subservient, subsided, delighted, as they see me jumping freely, they got the wish from the, bottle, from the bottle of the genie, believe me, on first glance, I'm not celebrated for me, Mr. E, but rather who I am not. Check the plot. Step up in the room and kids I adopt, protect and serve like a cop, minus the body drop. I see snickers and eyes pop. To them, I serve as a symbol. A sign it's safe to act insubordinate. A sign of submergence of the surrounding system. Though it's my duty that I'm subjugated to a system supply supervision through my sparkling specs, my insightful supervision allows me to see. See that I am susceptible. 
susceptible to what is non-acceptable when their teacher is here. Though I hold no fear for I know on the inner I'm a supernova superstar with a substantial amount of substance. So I stand in front of the class, styling and profiling in my substance till I hear a student yell, so you're our sub? At first I pause and reply, no, I'm your teacher for today. Though I've come to make some substitutions, not necessarily seating arrangements for now that is, but your heart's beating arrangements because in 60 seconds, I've already got a pulse on this room. I saw it as soon as I stepped in so soon, you're starving for some real inspiration. Another station to engage with, fuse with food for thought for the reality, we're facing something real, something which subsedes that which is subpar. See, luckily for you, this subs bars go dumb hard. This subs conscious gonna get up in your subconscious. This subs rhymes is sublime. After all, see this sub live, the whole class snaps, streams, and subscribes. See, I got drive. I didn't come here on the subway. I saved money by packing my own sandwich for lunch. I'm still eating fresh. That's this sub's way. Technically, I'm not a real teacher. So by the Department of Education, I have not yet been subdued. Though outside of the classroom, this sub has paid his dues. Don't worry about this sub's title. If you miss what I'm saying, I'll write it on the board so you can see it in subtitles. You want that heat, I'll be a supplier. Turn the classroom into a campfire, ventilate my vibe throughout this tribe. And since this class is supplementary math and you seem to like rap, matter of fact, I have a riddle. Not no hey diddle diddle, something which may relate more just a little. Okay, what did Kendrick Lamar say to the 90 degree angles? If you know it, you could unmute yourself and shout it out. What did Kendrick Lamar say to the 90 degree angles? He said, we going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, suppose oh, you never, I, suppose you, I suppose you never heard that one. You see, I've created it myself. This sub is on track to subtract the whack sense of self-entitlement bone in the back, which some of you may lack, and get you back on track to keep the wheel moving like a holy hula hoop. To keep that pencil moving like a stick shift in a Subaru, all y'all got potential like the Warriors. I'm just trying to guide y'all like Steve Kerr. I come from an era before, yer, it was hooty hoo. I could relate I was that class clown. Comedic relief that wouldn't back down, back of the class in the background, popular kid and outcast. Couple of times I had to lay the smack down. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson is absent today. Word to Mr. Mackey, I make it look easy, okay? I've come with a gift to connect with teens. Dig deeper with surface level like submarines, reaching beings from urban to suburban scenes by any means. It seems even if your teacher didn't leave a lesson plan today, I promise you're going to get this work. You're going to get this lyrical lesson, wisdom within wordplay session, writer for a reason. Use the pen as my righteous weapon, living legend. Watch while I'm stepping, check the mirror, feeling my reflection. Knowledge is to know the ledge and where the ledge end teacher slash preacher and reverend that's when the student said so mister what is it exactly that you teach i reply i teach what i've learned i help heal from where i've been burned each day i teach a new subject because life is strange and subject to change so through experience there's a lot in my range but today today i'm your substitute teacher Whew. thank you you never, you never disappoint. Let me tell you, the people on the line are saying they love the wordplay. We gonna be all right. Um, come on, Mr. Eve, you better tell them, you better bring it. And then you're killing it, Eric. So these are the comments from the audience out there. We are enjoying, we did enjoy that. We most definitely. Awesome. Do I have time for one more quick one? Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. Awesome, awesome. So. Uh, a combination, like I said, of James's title. I'm gonna I'm gonna fuse those both in. So the first he spoke about a child, you know, and that's where you know we got the sub and the education. And then he spoke about a child not having a home. So this next piece is called "A uh, House Is Not a Home," hmm. and you'll see. I think you'll get where I'm going with it. There's uh, definitely a lot of personification used within this. I said, you know that saying, "Home is where the heart is." Well, I got a house and a roof over my head, but it's slightly off the target. <laughs> now I'm a bachelor and I've been on the roam, far away from a place that I'd once called home. Now, I'm not going to give you the keys to my old home address, so let's just refer to it as her or she. You know that saying, 
eyes are the windows to the soul. I will peek through her windows and see she was whole. Her window panes hid the pain of old leaks in the ceiling from when it rained or old tenants who clogged up a drain on her walls left a permanent stain. Though what attracted me to her most was her sense of solid foundation, especially when I found out her intellect ran deep when I found out she had a finished basement. And her roof, her roof, her roof was on fire. Was never into redheads, but it was flames and I admired. Became aware of her beautiful bushes and landscape even before I entered her front door. It was well kept and trimmed like a chia pet from old four. Solid security system keeping it safe like bro door meant some amenities allowed for me to show more. Her backyard bestowed the illest back porch slash balcony. Garden in the back held magical powers like the alchemy. After school, I would take a dip in a swimming pool. Backstroke, breaststroke, go underwater, hold my breath and throw the torpedo. You know, pool aerobics known to boost the man's libido. After that, we get up out the pool, lay up in the sun and air dry. Swaying from the hammock, swinging from the trees like a hair tie. Cleanliness on point, smell of freshness and aroma. Whole kitchen full of food that'll leave you in a coma. Paid rent for a couple of years, introduced her to a few of my peers, made a mess after a barrel of beers. But then the taxes started raising. I had to get a new job. I started living there long distance. After a while, the commute just didn't compute. We had to call the good riddance. It seemed as if as soon as I moved out, somebody new moved in right in that instance. Didn't lock it down, didn't open up a mortgage. Was in my early 20s, thought, life is long, let me explore this. Since then, I've been moving from hotel to motel just like a tourist, but that old home still stays stuck in my head just like a chorus. Sometimes like E.T., I want to phone home, but it's been a long time and since then I've grown. I think it's only right that I leave that old home, I mean, house, in this poem. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Appreciate that. Apologize for the background noise. This, that's that Zoom life. Thank you. <laughs> this Zoom life works for some. Like This is like a platform where no matter where the poet is, we're allowed to connect be together, share some words, share some vibes. Um, it has its disadvantages, but it definitely, most definitely has advantages as well. We appreciate you, Eric. Thanks for bringing that to our stage. Thanks for uh, joining us. Thanks for sharing your work. As always, um, you add the most, the most to any environment that you are a part of. And I am extremely proud of you. Um, thank you so much. And thank you guys for having me, uh, Amira James and all the other uh, incredible dope poets uh, in this live. I can't wait to hear you guys. So thank you again. You're welcome. And I hope to see you on the next um, uh, platform of When People Speak. We'll give you an invitation, join our VIP section, talk to the poets, converse about their work, just motivate them as we motivate each other and keep this going. Thank you, Eric. Absolutely. Yes. Hang out in the VIP section. You, know, you don't have to leave right away. <laughs> Um, so um, we're going to move up to our next guest, and I'm going to ask my co-host to start the introduction for the next guest. Yes, yes. This next guest um, is so powerful. Um, there's, there's a thing in poetry called the voice, and that is the tone, the texture, and just the, 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 the power in the type of words that you bring. And this gentleman exudes that with every breath that comes out of his lungs. And I truly respect him as a writer. I respect him as a performer and as well as an actor, um, cause he's not just a poet, he's also an actor. And he's won festival awards um, he's gone on to do personal projects, uh, directing, and he is truly a testament to what his nickname is, and which is the beacon, because he is the beacon of light when it comes to performing arts. And I am so happy to have him with us. Um, and I know you're going to be just as happy as I am the minute he starts. 
Absolutely. Uh, I don't know from there if you want to say, because I, I can mean, go we, on about this brother. Right drum here. roll for this one, right? Because like you called him the beacon. I thought you were going to say the beacon, like the deacon of poetry. Like he has so many levels to him. Like he's a triple threat. He's all of that. And the, the main thing before he even begins with his poetry is I respect this, this young man to the, to the ultimate top. Um, he's always a gentleman. Um, he's, his work is phenomenal. Um, he's an educator. He's all of everything that you said, James. So now that we've played him up, we can collect our money after the show. Let's call him on to the stage. Come on, Brother Shaheed, what you got for us? What you got? Yeah, Thank you so much. That was, uh, that's gotta be the best introduction I've had in quite some time. Thank you both very much. The check is in the mail. I appreciate y'all. Uh, <laughs> but to, to touch on the subject that James brought up, you know, uh, I recently had some interesting family events take place. And because of that, I'm reminded of family. And James, you spoke about a child and their mother and how not having that parentage can affect them in a certain way. And, you know, if anything, this piece is more of a story than a poem, but it's about someone who affected me in a way that I'll never forget. And, uh, I think it's best that I think it's best that I dedicate it to the person that it's about. So this piece is in honor of my mother, Gwendolyn Woods. Black Lives Matter started in a Ford Mustang doing 90 through the backwoods. A band of three chasing sunset, praying for light to come, eyes low, bellies full, my cousin Valerie waving in the distance the last time she'd see my mother alive. We left. Asphalt turned to dirt road. Street light became moonlight. Nestled in the backseat, I began to drift off and fall asleep. Until the gentle kiss of the words, dear God, crept from the front. My brother and I, in childlike wonder, attempted to peek out the back window until the stern whisper of stay down uttered from her lips. A flicker of light caught the eye of the driver, then one, then three, and then five. In that moment, I knew we had been kidnapped, stolen away, transported to the year 1765, 1866, 1962, no longer a band of three, but a group of niggers on the run from the Klan, ghost white sheets carrying fire red torches. Only black bodies or black blood would satiate their thirst. And in the back seat, I, clutching an X-Men comic, prayed that I could be cable, bend time and space to my will, but I couldn't. I could not save us. I could not save her. Hounds barked, the thunderous stomp of cloven hooves became our shadow. Cowards in bed linens shouted <laughs> from horseback. I heard my mother gripping the steering wheel, cry out to God in a faint whisper, not today, not my sons, not like this. A dust cloud formed, tire touched asphalt, and my mother let out a sigh of relief until Bang! A shot rings out and the back window shatters. And then, bang! Another shot rings out and the car swerves left. Down! 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 She cried. As if there is no up. Pedal touched floor, eyes searched for God, and the car reached 88 miles per hour. We three went back to the future. Now leaving Baltimore sign telling us that freedom had come. In those moments, I knew my mother was a quiet revolutionary. She had done more for black lives than any officer walking the beat in my neighborhood. Our revolution was not televised. Our story was not newsworthy, but I knew then that black lives mattered. But that day, is no different from today in the land of the Jim Crow South. I still don't buy white sheets for fear that my dreams will chase me awake. 
So now I speak a quiet mantra. Father, forgive my melanin. Father, forgive my melanin. Forgive the sin of the skin that I was born in. Father, forgive my melanin. One day, one day I'll return to Baltimore. I'll see my cousin and I'll honor my mother's memory. But when I do, I pray God for their sake that history does not repeat itself. Thank you. Pure silence Ooh. in the VIP section. It's nothing but tears and hearts on the Facebook live stream. Um, I can barely bring my voice out of my chest, out of my throat, through my mouth to respond to that performance. And you and I go way back and we talked about this experience together and you helped me. And I hope that I helped you through those times. And man, man, thank you, Shahid. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, the, the, the Facebook, Facebook feed is blowing up. Oh my God, he's fired. This brother is no words, crazy fire. Wow, so dope. That's a testament to you, you know. Shahid, you know, personally, me personally, um, the first of all, that's hands down one of my favorite pieces of yours. Um, I think we, I think he froze. You can hear us, Shahid? I'm here. Okay. Hands down, one of my favorite pieces of yours, the emotion in that poem, like you have no choice but to feel, um, especially any black person, you have no choice but to feel that. Like, especially that when you resonate those lines, you know, Father, forgive me of my melanin. Whew. Like that right there, the depths of that, you, you can't even quantify. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just love that piece. I love who you are. I love your passion for, for poetry, your passion for um, acting. And uh, I personally wanna thank you. And you, you, heard, you, told, you, you, you heard me tell you this before, but that night when I shared the stage with you and you helped direct that whole show, um, I wouldn't have had the best performance of my life if it wasn't for what you said to me the night before. Yeah. And that's not just a testament to your skill, but your testament to who you are as a teacher. You know, you, you're not just a performer, you're a teacher. And you taught me a lot. And I use that to this day in my performances. And I thank you personally for that. Love you, brother. Love you. Love you too, man. I'm, I'm I mean, yeah, you're making all of us go on and write a, a poem dedicated to mom. Thank you so much. We can all re relate to that piece. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Yeah, you can hang out in the VIP section and encourage some of the other artists that'll follow you. Um, but we greatly appreciate your presence here on When People Speak. And we hope to see you on the next show. Thank you, brother Shaheed. <laughs>